right, so I want to talk to you about the Raku glazes. And the Raku glazes are uh, different from the Cone 10 glazes that are in the main part of the studio. Mostly we have them in the red buckets. Uh, Texas Twister is, is not in a red bucket, but it's in this general area. I want to focus on the fact that the Raku glazes are also different than the low fire glazes, 0604. And so up here we're not talking about those right now. But the Raku glazes are used for a particular type of firing. What we do, actually I'm going to start with this one over here. What we do during this firing is we take these, uh, we take the glazes, we fire them in a different type of kiln. Uh, it's a, it's a, outside, a kiln that we have outside. We fire it up real fast to about 1800 degrees. That's roughly our bisque temperature, a um, little bit cooler. And uh, when the glaze is literally molten, it's melting down the side of the pot, it's red hot, we stop the kiln, we pick up these pieces with tongs, because they're going to burn our fingers, pick them up with tongs, and we put them in a bucket of combustible, so a bucket of shredded paper or a bucket of uh, news, um, uh, leaves. They light that stuff on fire, because they're red hot, remember. And what happens on some of the glazes is the glaze itself cracks. So all these little cracks in the surface, what we're actually looking at is the glaze itself has cracked because of that heat shock of going from 1800 degrees to 70 or 30 or whatever temperature it is outside. When we put it into the bucket of combustibles, those cracks fill up with smoke. Any place on the pot that doesn't have any glaze, so here on the bottom where it's been waxed, or here on these lines where it's been waxed, or in the sections that have cracked, the smoke is actually going to absorb into the clay. So what we're actually looking at here with these cracks is we're looking through this glaze into the, the clay, and the clay itself has, those, has the smoke inside of it. This is a clear crackle glaze. This is a white crackle glaze. And the only difference really being that one looks white and one is clear. The clear can be used in combination with some other glazes. So this one has some other glaze mixed in. And the clear can also go over an underglaze. So you can put the underglaze color on and then put the clear over the top. Those are over here. And the white crackle glaze is here. The clear crackle glaze is here. We've got Del Favero inside of there, and I'll talk about that in a moment. The other kind of glazes that we have for Raku glazes are um, the, the luster glazes, the, the copper glazes. So this glaze has copper in it, and you don't see a lot of cracking. You do see the black area where the smoke has absorbed into the, the exposed clay. But the rest of this had a copper glaze over the top, and the copper itself has changed color because of that violent reducing atmosphere, that post-firing reduction that has a lot of smoke in it, um, has a lot of uh, fuel but not much air, and so it causes the copper to turn green where it has some air, to turn uh, sort of reddish coppery, and sometimes even to turn blue or purple or some of these other colors. This one is Texas Twister. There's some other examples of Texas Twister as well, and you can see some real variation between one with a little bit more fire fuel and one with a little bit more air is a little bit more green. Those examples are kept above the Texas Twister glaze, and that glaze is right here. Hawaiian Copper Blue and Del Favero both have some copper in them as well. Uh, Hawaiian Copper Blue turns those similar kinds of colors, but the texture of the glaze is different. It's not as shiny. Del Favero is uh, uh, maybe an in-between texture. And this one is fairly oxidized, meaning it had lots of oxygen. We may, by the end of the quarter, have some more examples of pieces that get a little bit more action happening here, a little bit more uh, of the coppery kinds of colors mixed in with the turquoise. All of those glazes, are kept under here, and these go on just like regular cone 10 glazes. You can put them on your pieces by dipping, spraying, or pouring, um, but they can only be fired in the Raku kiln. We shouldn't be firing them in cone 10, they'll melt and they'll cause a big problem, a uh, big mess in my kiln. These are also not food safe for two reasons. One is that the clay, or that the, the copper glaze, that copper is not as secure in the, in the glaze itself, it actually does what we call leaching, and some of that copper can get into the food, so you don't want to eat food out of this. The other reason is that the fire
firing temperature, these have been fired to such a low temperature that they, uh, the clay itself is not vitrified. The clay is porous still, and so if you're drinking your coffee or your soup out of here, um, some of that coffee or soup actually seeps into the clay itself. And of course there's already smoke there, so you potentially have a little bit of smoke in with your coffee. Uh, probably not ideal. So these are decorative sorts of things. There's one more type of firing that we talk about when we talk about Raku firing. It's, it's a little different. It doesn't have a glaze on it. And this, the surface of this pot is shiny because it's been burnished. Uh, it's been smoothed with a stone or a spoon or something or a rib or all of those ahead of time. But this has, the decoration on it is not glaze. It's horsehair. So this kind of firing is similar how we start it. So we put it in the kiln, we fire it up quickly to temperature, but then, and we take it out when it's red hot. Now this isn't molten, obviously, because it doesn't have a glaze on it. But we take it out of the kiln, we put it on a shelf or something, and then we pick up some pieces of horsehair. So we pick up these pieces of horsehair and hold them and put them, we hold the horsehair like this and we put it on the pot, and where it hits the pot, that horsehair starts to burn. And where it burns, it kind of rolls up or crinkles up and leaves these marks. So these marks, just like the black on the other raku, this is where smoke is absorbed into the clay. This is an area where there wasn't any smoke. And that's what we get as a horsehair uh, look on these things. You are welcome to mix these glazes together. <coughs> you are welcome to use any of the, the raku glazes we have. Um, you, they are not food safe. They're also not recommended for fragile work because we have to take this out of the kiln with tongs and we have to put it into a bucket. And so pieces that have little skinny bits sticking off can break. And um, porcelain is also tends to want to break. So small porcelain pieces can make it, but larger porcelain or slab built porcelain may crack. All right. Uh, if you have questions, make sure you're asking. This is a very different way of working with glazes, and so it's perfectly legitimate for you to have some questions. I'd rather you ask over and over than have uh, things going into the wrong kiln. Thanks.